Hey, Luke, if you've sensed a, a gaining of collective confidence in the players, uh, why do you think that's evolved, and, and where, especially considering these last couple of weeks in, in particular? But where, where do you think that's coming from? Um, it's coming from within. It's well, it, it, it comes from a, a group of guys that works really hard together. It comes from a group of guys that um, has gone through. I, I know it's a short season, uh, you know, in the big picture of how long this team will be together. But um, it's a group of guys that have lost nine straight. They lost a bunch of early games in the season um, that we had chances of winning. Um, and you learn from that, and you keep working, and you keep fighting, and uh, you get better. And our guys, now that they, they've won some of these, you can see the confidence in what they're doing, the way they're, comp they're play uh, calling plays, the way that they're stepping their game up uh, defensively in the, in the fourth quarter. So it's just, you know, it's part of the process, and it's not obviously going to be like this forever all of a sudden. We're going to hit another, another rough patch at some point, and... Uh, you just, you know, it's, it's good to feel the winning, though. It's good to feel what it's like um, for them to, to, to know what it takes. And uh, real happy for them right now. Do you know yet if you'll have the two new guys in for the next game? And uh, we're also. supposed to have. They're supposed to meet us in Dallas, from my understanding, and be ready to play if we need them. Now, uh, you know, it's tough to. With you get brand new guys, well, obviously we'll get them a video playbook. We'll have coaches sit with them and walk through some of the stuff we do. Um, but it's pretty limited when it happens that quickly. Um, but as of right now, they're supposed to meet us in Dallas and be ready to play for that game. Luke, did you did you have any idea how your guys would handle this, just like mentally and emotionally, after you know losing two of their guys today? For us, you're talking about our guys losing JC and Larry, right? Um, I didn't. I, it was I was I don't want to say looking forward to it because it was obviously uh, it was a tough day for for everyone uh, down there, and uh, we have a very young group, and a lot of them have never gone through and had teammates traded. Uh, so uh, it, this morning it was the it, it was pretty quiet in the film room getting ready for this game, and uh, you know we. We kept engaging them and saying, you know, this is part of the business. We got to grow up, uh, you know, learning that this is how this league works a lot of times. And I, I, I didn't know how long it would take, but the energy before the game was already much better. Um, so I was curious to see how long it would take and if our guys would be ready to perform after, you know, two of their teammates got traded away. And obviously they did a nice job of doing it. Luke, it seemed like the the way you guys played um, shorthanded tonight was the the way you kind of talked about pregame, which was, you know, sort of your formula. Do you find that this team is kind of going to that, you know, pass a lot, move the ball, hustle on defense, like over this last month? Have they kind of found their formula, do you think? Yeah, there was a part in the first quarter where, you know, I, I said, all right, there we are. It's the first time so far this game that that's, that's our team. That's who we are. Um, and they, they know it, they can feel it, and you can see it. Uh, with them when they're playing that way. But we're still a, a young team that's learning and getting better so that we go through stretches all the time where we're not playing that way, where we're, we're not rotating, we're not sending guys in. I mean, at Steven Adams, he's the whole scouting report was sending two, three guys to box him out, and he had six offensive rebounds in the first half. So in the second half, we did a much better job of not just going down there, but guys attacking the ball. And I think we held them to one in the second half. But so there's still all you know a ton, all the room for growth in in the consistency part of it that usually takes year after year of of doing it before it really becomes something you do consistently uh, night in and night out. But uh, again, really happy with the the progress we've made so far and where we're at. 16 games, I think you guys have won 11 of those or 12. I and mean, that's not a small. Thank you for correcting him. Thank you, sir. That's not a small sample size in the course of a season. Um, do, you view, do you view that as a significant chunk of, of time? I know you're talking about there's still these big rooms for growth. but Yeah, it's a, it's a big jump in, in that area of, the cat, uh, of what you're talking about as far as closing games out. Um, from where we started the season where we, you know, we had we, we kind of needed other teams to miss shots or someone on our team to to get really hot to win a game. Um, to now we can you know consistently just do the things uh, 
mainly defensively uh, to, to secure wins is, is huge progress uh, for this group uh, when you're talking about closing out ball games. Luke, um, how do you continue? How do you get the guy, the new guys, to fit into the momentum that you guys have right now, rather than disrupt it? Well, it's you know we're, we play a certain way, and uh, you know we hold each other accountable for that. I can't ask the players to do it if um, if I'm not going to take guys out when they're not playing that way. So I think uh, you know it's a little easier to be able to do that when you're winning games. So that's nice. But uh, I, I don't, I don't see the new guys having a problem with that. Like we play a fun style of basketball. We compete, we run, we play fast. Um, for those two, the way they shoot the ball, if you're open, I'm going to tell them to shoot it every time. Um, so I don't, I, I wouldn't en envision them having an issue with the way that we play. Luke, but throw, setting aside something like the Orlando game, uh, what's the significance for you of, of you guys starting to do much better against some of the lower teams in the league or tonight, like, you know, an Oklahoma City team that's that's missing a lot of guys? What, what's, the the, what's the significance, significance of that? Well, it just shows growth. It, it, it yeah. shows growth. It's, you know, we were the team earlier in the year, which a lot of uh, – a lot of, I'm not going to say bad teams, but teams that aren't winning in this league do that. They get up for the big games, and then they lay an egg against teams of their caliber. And um, it, it shows maturity and growth that, you know, we've been staying engaged and, and playing a, a certain level um, no matter who we're playing against. And, and that's what we want to do, because that's what we preach every day. It's, it's about us. It's about how we play. It's about how we approach our jobs. It's about how we work and practice. And then we'll make adjustments according to the personnel and the team we're playing. But when, when you get the consistent effort like that, then you know the guys truly are buying into the fact that it is about what we're doing as a team. Luke, two, two questions, one vastly more important than the other. Uh, first of all, what inspired you to go no tie open collar tonight? Um, I forgot my tie. <laughs> forgot my tie. <laughs> that was the important one. And yeah, uh, my so. coaching staff, being the loyal members they are, decided not to wear their ties either uh, to show unity on the bench. You're just taking one of their ties. Well, no, because now I'm not being loyal to them. Um, Julius, on on to less serious things. Um, Julius. It was probably talked about in trade rumors more than anybody else on your team over the course of the season. How do you think he handled that, and what do you think maybe he takes away from the fact that the team decided to, to keep him through the deadline and go into next summer? Well, um, Julius has done he, – he's grown up a lot in the time that I've known him, and I think this is just another stepping stone for his growth as a professional. I mean, from the trades to me not starting him at the beginning of the year um, – to you know, me and him butting heads over it, and then him embracing this backup five role. To now, everyone want, talking about trading him. Uh, it just it, it forces you to you know to grow quicker in this league. And I think, uh, you know, not just him, but all of our young guys. The, the quicker they experience some of these things, uh, the better they're going to be on the court. It's why veterans are. They, they, they're better in this league. They win in this league because they've been through all these things and now they know how to perform no matter what's happening. And Julius, uh, with all that talk going on, he's been one of our most steady players. He's done uh, everything we've asked of him. He's, he's getting so much better at reading when to make a pass, when a double team's coming, and when uh, to go score the ball. And all of that is just... Uh, little little signs of of a player uh, growing up and, and starting to really understand the NBA NBA game and let the NBA game kind of slow down uh, so he can do what he does well.